One of the most useful tools within Video Studio is the customized motion screen, which you can use to keyframe a bunch of different options, like a clip's position, size, opacity, and lots more, so that they change over time to your direction. Clips on any video track can have their motion customized, but it's easiest to show you with a clip on an overlay track. My clip is a windsurf video, which should work well here. For example, if I had a bunch of different windsurf clips that I want to display over this beach background, but display them in a dynamic and interesting way. We can, of course, change the size of the clip by adjusting with scale mode turned on. But we can't set the size to change over time. Once we set the size, it will remain the same. To access more controls, right-click the clip and select Motion, Customize Motion. This is the screen we'll be working in, and it only affects the clip we right-clicked on. We have transport controls to play or move through the clip over time, and we have a timeline below where our keyframes will be displayed. You can see by default we have one at the start and one at the end. Whenever we make an adjustment to any of the parameters below, the values will be updated for the keyframe that our playhead is currently over. So, at the start of the clip, over the first keyframe, if we change position to 20 on both the X and Y axis, this is the position that the clip will start at. If we scrub through the timeline, we can see that the clip moves from the upper right back to the center, as our end clip still has the default values, where the clip is in the center of the screen. If we want to copy these new parameters to the end keyframe, so that there is no motion, we can right-click the first keyframe and select either Copy and Paste to All, or Copy and Paste to all keyframes to the right. Now we have a static clip again, but with a new position. To make things more intuitive, we can also adjust some of the parameters directly on the preview monitor. Let's jump to the middle of the clip on the timeline and drag the clip to where we want it to be at this point. We can see Video Studio automatically creates a keyframe at this point on our timeline. And if we scrub through the timeline, we can see the clip starts at our initial position, moves to the new position, and then moves back to the original position. Keyframes can be moved around. Just drag the keyframe to where you want it to be. If we want the transition between the initial keyframe and the one we just created to move faster, we can just drag it towards the first keyframe. If we want it slower, just drag it the other way. We can do the same with other parameters, like size. Click and drag one of the yellow corner handles, and we can see the size parameter is updated with the new value for that keyframe. By default, the X and Y axis for size are locked together, so that they change together proportionally, preserving the original aspect ratio of your clip. But if you need to, you can unlock the two axes from each other and manipulate X and Y separately. I'll reset the size percentages to the same value and then relock them again. Rotation can also be adjusted from the preview window. Click and drag one of the pink circles at the outside edge of the object, and then rotate your clip how you want it. The green squares at the edge of the clip are for distorting the object in a different way to create 3D effects and make the object look like it's lifting off of the flat 2D plane. You can also perform the same function with the proxy in the bottom right as well. So let's make our clip lean back into the screen to get a feeling of depth. We can help sell this effect with the shadow properties. So at our middle keyframe, let's turn shadow opacity up. We can now see the shadow underneath the clip. Let's also increase the shadow distance. We can make the shadow blur more as if it's softer as well. Or change the angle as if the light source that is creating the shadow is coming from somewhere else. There's also options to add a border to your clip. Or a mirror image of the clip as if it's reflecting off a surface with settings to customize each. All of these options can help sell the believability of your motion, creating the illusion of a 3D space within your flat 2D footage. However, there is one aspect that we haven't touched yet, and that is how fast the changes take place. Sure, we can move our keyframes around if we want the new values to be reached sooner, 
But how do we get, say, the movement of a clip to accelerate or decelerate between two keyframes? This is where ease in and ease out comes in. Let's reset and start with a blank canvas to demonstrate. At the first keyframe, I'll put the object on the left of the screen, copy its value to the end keyframe, and then three seconds in, I'll create a new keyframe with the clip on the right side of the screen. And again, copy this new value to the end keyframe. Playing the result, the clip moves at a steady pace, but sometimes some variation in this movement can make the motions much nicer and more believable. At the first keyframe, I'll select Ease In. We can now see the clip starts off slowly, then picks up speed until it reaches the next keyframe. The whole movement is over in the same amount of time, it just looks nicer. There's four variations for easing, which we alter from the slider here, with progressively more easing the more the slider is to the right. Let's try it at the fourth setting, and we can see the clip takes a lot longer to get going. We can combine this with Ease Out, which does the reverse, reduces the speed as the clip approaches the next keyframe. Let's set it back to level 1 and then preview the result. Easing also works on most other features. Let's add in a double rotation on the x-axis, and we can see rotation is also eased. Let's turn easing off again and compare. Which do you prefer? Speaking of rotation, you've also got control over the center point of your object, indicated by the small red square. Although by default it is of course in the center, we can change this for some interesting effects. Let's reset and start again, and set 720 degrees of x-axis rotation on the end keyframe. And we can see the clip flips over on itself. Let's reset again. Then move the center point to the top of the clip. Center point is keyframed, so if we want it to stay in this location, we need to copy the value to the end keyframe as well, and put 720 degrees of rotation in again. Now the clip flips around the new center point. Size changes are also affected by the center point position. Let's delete the rotation from the first keyframe, and increase the size of the clip on the ending keyframe. The clip will grow from where the center point is located and not the actual center of the object as before. So that should give you a good overview of the customized motion menu. The final thing to add is that all of these parameter adjustments and keyframing can be saved and the motion reused with different clips or objects. You can use graphics, text, images or video clips, which opens up some amazing customization options which you can reuse again and again. Please see our tutorial on creating custom motion paths for more details. And happy editing!